YouTube, we're in our Super Bowl. Want to break down a little gameplay for you? Talk about some things. MCS action has been awesome to watch. Got a little gameplay for you. Doing some different things uh, just from kind of what we learned from the meta out of Bunch Strong. I'm in Jets. I love Jets. I love Bunch Strong. I'm actually thinking of switching to Bears because I literally only call Bunch Strong and they have a better Bunch Strong and they have a couple other things you can do out of it. So uh, thinking about that, and uh, we're going to be updating that. Probably probably we'll do a full Bears ebook anyway, just for the Patreon members as well, to kind of show how you can combine tight slots and bunch strong really well. But uh, yeah, just want to want to get into it and uh, just talk. Now, um, another thing that I wanted to talk about, obviously, with the MCS games, and I wanted to just talk about learning from other people. So um, one of the best ways to learn anything ever is to look at... Uh, somebody else who does it better than you do it. <laughs> uh, that is the whole idea behind eBooks. That is the whole idea behind uh, basically any of that stuff. And I'm going to finish my coffee and we're going to come back to this topic in just a second. All right, boys back. Sorry. I had to finish my coffee. It is early in the morning here when I'm recording this video and guess what? We're running a little three, four odd. This is something I'm messing around with a uh, full ebook, probably coming soon. Maybe a little mini scheme. We'll drop on the on the YouTube channel as well. I know a lot of you guys want something off meta, but I want to talk in this video. The more I think about it, we got Madden Bowl going on, so I figured it'd be a good time to talk about this topic, and that is why learning the meta is important. So if you think about this for just like, if you think about this just logically, now before you click off of the video, before you know I said the word meta, don't click off the word off the video, please, <laughs> because I want to explain this. And I actually think this matters beyond just this year of Madden. I think it matters beyond really even Madden in general. And uh, we're going to talk about why this matters. So why is learning the meta kind of foundational or important? Well, learning the meta is foundational or important because if you know the meta, then you can basically cross apply the meta to almost anything else. The meta is in essence the foundation or the foundation in which the game is built off of, right? And I'm going to explain why this is true in light of the Madden Bowl and then how you can take what you know is meta and then apply it to whatever it is you want to run, okay? So it doesn't just have to stay with bunch and uh, tight or whatever or dollar. You can actually cross-apply this stuff to a lot of different areas, okay? So that's that's our objective here. Hopefully we'll be able to do this. And, uh, and you'll get something out of this. Okay, so why is, why is understanding or learning the meta important? Let's talk about this from a perspective of the Madden Bowl. So if you just think about it logically, the players that are playing in the Madden Bowl right now, they are playing for the most amount of money. Uh, they're playing for the most amount of money in the game, okay? So they're trying to make the most amount of money. Well, when there's a lot of money on the line, like hundreds of thousands of dollars, potentially millions of dollars on the line, you probably are going to release the fact that you don't want to be cute, right? You're, you're going to do what works at the highest level because the most important thing for you and for your family is for you to win the game. Now, again, and, and, and I actually heard Civil say something, and I'm going to say this, and I think it actually helps make a lot of sense as to why um, we people like me and, and really anyone in general talk about Madden in a little bit more of like maybe a serious way than you do or other people do. So you might say, well, what's the big deal? It's a video game, right? Well, what's the big deal with people caring about an NFL game? It's just a, it's just a backyard football game, right? Or what's the big deal with people caring about basketball? Well, basketball is a recreational sport, but at the highest level, you can make a significant amount of money playing basketball, right? Playing football, playing Madden, playing hockey, playing any sport, okay? So when you are optimizing for what is going to win you money, you are trying to find what is the most effective tactic that you can have available to you to be able to attack, you know, whatever it is that, that you need to be able to do. That's ridiculous. Ah, that's so bad of me. I should have just, mm, I can't believe I missed that throw. Okay, so that's like really, really important. It's a fundamental truth that if you are playing and there are hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line, you don't want to put yourself at a competitive disadvantage by via either A, your preparation, your scheme of choice, any of that. You're, you're doing everything you possibly can. I don't know if I could fit that in. That was kind of dumb of me to throw too. Um, you're, you're trying to do everything you possibly can to win the game. That That is literally the core of, of why 
most comp Madden players are a very good case study because they are they are truly trying to win and there is a significant amount of money at stake and they're literally people's entire livelihoods are at stake. And so they're not going to just be like, well, I kind of like this offense. I'm just going to run this. They're not going to do that. <laughs> you know, they're just not. Okay. So we're, he's going to quit out. I'm going to talk about this in another video. We'll keep, we'll keep this conversation going. Okay. We're back. <laughs> All right. So let's keep talking about this. So, okay. So where we left off was basically the highest level of Madden is the MCS. It is, is just the clear cut highest level of Madden. Okay. People are going to do what they can to optimize for winning because it's not just about winning. It's about what winning affords them. Obviously people get into comp Madden because they love the game and the best way to play Madden is for the love of the game, so to speak. But at the end of the day, people are trying to make money playing this game. Okay. Uh, and so that, and, and some people, not, not everybody is though. Some people are playing this game recreate recreationally. So we need to kind of like respect that as well. Uh, cause that is an added element. I don't know how he's out of there with Derrick Henry. Please just tackle him. Um, okay. So, so, so that's like the, the foundation of, of what I want to talk about is like they're optimizing for winning because winning doesn't just mean like a title winning means they won money that can literally change their life. Okay. So with that foundation, now from there, a lot kind of makes sense in light of the meta, so to speak, okay? So they're going to run what gives them the best chance to win, okay? So you, you basically in Madden 24, what we've seen is there's really two offenses, maybe three, that give you the best chance to win. And then there's really one, maybe two defenses that give you the best chance to win. Okay. So the offensive playbook that playbooks that give you the best chance to win is the, the, um, bills trips tight in or really trips tight in in general, that could be bills Packers or, um, what's the playbook Kobo use. I think it's running gun. Those are the three options. Okay. hundred percent. So now from a formation perspective, it gets even more specific than that trips tight in bunch offset bunch strong offset and then some what we would call like what i would call like supplemental formations but from a mainstay formation perspective those are the clear-cut best formations in this game they they just are and you see and and, and the reason why now i'm going to talk a little bit more as the as kind of the off season goes on because i want to really study this this off season I'm going to talk about like why that's the case. Cause I do think there's a legitimate reason and it's not as straightforward as people might think. Um, I think it, at, at the basic level, the reasoning is just because it gives them the most options. It gives them the most ability to attack the most space on the field. Remember defenses are always trying to constrain space. Offenses are always trying to create space. So I think there is some little uh, piece of that, that gives us the insight as to why um, those formations are the best. Okay. And we'll talk about more of that as it goes on. Now, here's what's important. When you watch a game of Madden or when you study what the best players do, you learn, um, if you look close enough, you, you success leaves clues, right? That's a, that's a quote. Um, and so no matter what level of Madden you are playing or skill acquisition you're trying to achieve, you are always wanting to use film study, film analysis to watch what the best players are doing attempt to understand what the best players are doing and then apply the takeaways or the learnings that you have. That is in essence, the whole idea of not only why, um, not only why like it's good for any level of Madden player to utilize film study, but it's also good for any level of Madden player to not only utilize film study, but then implement the takeaways that they have and it doesn't have to be into the bunch strong or the bunch offset formation. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be. You can achieve meta principles from off meta formations. It's why I'm running three, four odd right now, because the whole reason for me running three, four odd, I really don't care. I would sit in dollar all game if I felt like that was the best option. The, the, there's only one problem with three, four odd that, or a dollar that I ever have. And that is if they come out in a really heavy running set, I need to be able to have something that can counter that. I haven't found anything better 
than three four odd. So I started kind of messing with three four odd. I figured out how to get a very similar a gap blitz out of that uh, set, very similar to three three five normal. And as you, if you also look at this closely, this was something that I heard um, from Kirby Smart, the uh, coach of Georgia. He said this, and I don't remember if it was a keynote speech or something, but basically he said, you are either an over or an odd. You are either an over front or you are an odd front, okay? And he was talking about your defense. He said, basically, there's two main fronts. Now, um, if you really look closely in Madden, we also know, and, and we know this from real NFL, uh, there's this idea of a bare front or a mint front or a tight front. But those fronts, if you really look at the core fundamentals of them, they're very similar to an odd front. So the, the point of that is you want to try to simplify what you're seeing so you can help un- it can help you understand how your formation, whatever formation it is, fundamentally has to operate based off of are you an even or an odd team or over or an odd team, right? So that is that is kind of the, the principle applied to defense. Now let's apply it to offense. I've talked about this before, but I think in general – you're either a spread team or a compression team or a combination of both. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at every formation in Madden, you can basically classify them in general with two by two spread, two by two compression, three by one spread, three by one compression. And then probably, and then we, the last classification is kind of um, really just more so for like quad style formations. Like here, he has a little, compression set on both sides really but he's got a spread out compression set but in general the classification still works we would treat that formation uh that he just ran like bunch in this example here we would treat this like he's got compression on one side and then and then he has like a spread set on the other side so we treat that maybe like um uh, tight doubles or something like that right that's my point is success leaves clues and also there's only so many combinations that people can practically have. Um, Madden has a limited amount of resources, if you will. And while there are a lot of different formations, fundamentally, they are all going to kind of dump into uh, these buckets that I just shared with you. Two by two spread, two by two compression, three by one spread, three by one compression. And then maybe in some kind of combination of all that, you might have like in trip side in, for example, it's three by one spread on the left, but then it's uh, compression, a two, a two receiver compression almost on the right side. So those are just all super important factors, in my opinion, for understanding how formations in Madden fundamentally work. And then back to why the meta is important. Well, the meta is important because it gives us principles of the best route combinations possible. It gives us principles of the best adjustments possible. And then what you do as you learn those is you can cross apply those adjustments and you can cross apply those route combos to whatever formation you want to run. There's ways to create concepts. Uh, they, they, They basically become transferable concepts that you can apply to anything. So if you want to become a better off meta player, you have to first learn the meta so you can understand why it is good and why it will be good in your game. For example, this route combo, as you see on your screen, I could run this. In my opinion, this is a terrible route combination. It doesn't really do anything. We have a high low, I guess, to the left side. If I did maybe this, this might now become a decent combo because I have a high low over here. But why would I do that when I can run a, what I would call like a good route combination where if we want to run a post, let's have a clear out streak over here to the left. And then let's have some type of thing attacking the flat with the tight end. And then on the backside, it's a two man route combination that we can really just do whatever we want to do as I throw a nice little pick six. I'm terrible at that play. I I, I am so bad at that play. I'm going to run that play every single time until I can learn it. (laughs) I really am starting to think that. Like, I'm really good at double corner. I'm really good at um, double corner. I'm really good at double corner. And I'm really good at double corner. I'm terrible at Durham. I I really am. I'm just, I'm just, I just can't read it. I always miss the read. I feel like the user just always messes me up in Durham. And that's in and, and here, let's talk about that. So it doesn't mean the play is bad. It doesn't mean the play is bad. It doesn't mean the route combo is bad. It means that I'm not executing the route combo like it's designed to be executed. And there is a fundamental difference between those two things. 
you don't have to have a lot of plays if you run plays well, right? So the same thing, this, this significantly applies because if you watch the best players in the world, they really, it boils down to some really key things that they have refined continually and that they are able to execute at a very, very high level. That is what Comp Madden is. And because there is so much pressure, as I throw another pick on the same, <laughs> that's terrible. I literally cannot, I can't run this play. I might have to run another play. I might lose this game because of this. But because, because there's so much on the line with Comp Madden, guys, it changes how they see the game because they have to optimize for success, not for fun. Uh, Comp Madden is fun, but at the core, it's a, it's for lack of a better, it's not a business, but it's a highly competitive, I mean, it is, but it's highly, it's a highly competitive game. Okay. It's like, it's like if I'm playing in the NFL and, and again, the business side of things, like if we win the Super Bowl, obviously our lives will change, even though our lives are already changed because we're in the NFL. But if we win the Super Bowl, that's where we start getting the legacy. And there are a lot of things that come with winning the Super Bowl financially. The bottom line is when you get to the Super Bowl, you're not hiding your plays. You're not hiding anything. And honestly, to a degree, like when you get to the playoffs, you're probably not hiding anything unless you're blowing the team out, right? You're probably not. So um, why does that matter for us? Because it helps, again, explain what you need to be looking for when you study Comp Madden film. When you study Comp Madden film, what you want to be looking for is you want to be looking at what are their route combos? What are their adjustments? Why are they doing those things? And how can I apply that in my scheme? And it might tell you, maybe you need to run Colts. Maybe you need to run Jets. Maybe you need to run. Maybe your stuff's not very good. <laughs> and, and, and seriously, like, there's a reason why it's the most optimized way to play the game, okay? So uh, I just think, in general, meta is always going... Meta is not a... It's not whether you like there being a meta or you don't like there being a meta. There's always going to be a meta. On offense, typically... Uh, there's going to be meta route combinations. Those meta route combinations will give you really the main thing around meta route combinations. If you think about it, they're trying to beat the most amount of coverage as possible within the, within the play. And that generally comes down to, and I've talked about this before, really five core passing concepts. Uh, it's sail, uh, shallow stick seams or six, and then cross. And basically this is, I take that from the air raid, uh, but this is essentially like if you, you can literally boil down every single route combination that's ever been good in Madden. And it's probably one of those five. Um, there's a couple of other ones that you see some years and you, just, you don't see other years like trail um, or or uh, bench last year was really good. He kind of is bagging this offense and it's really just because these random adjustments and bumping and me making terrible reads. <laughs> but anyway, in general, those are the best combinations. Okay. So because those are the best combinations, you have to you have to come back and say, okay, how do I apply that to single back wing flex close? Because I totally can, right? If I'm in single back wing flex close, I've got maybe like a little nub tied in over here. I could put a tight end apprentice post there. I could go with a streak, you know, do something like this. And now this is what I would consider a really good route combination for the most part. I wish I could hike the ball. So you see here, got a little clear out streak. He doesn't have a hard flat over here to the right. So you can create this stuff on the fly. You can create this stuff from any formation, but you have to have the fundamental knowledge. Uh, Michael Jordan watched Magic Johnson play. Michael Jordan watched Larry Bird play. Michael Jordan watched, uh, I, can't, I gotta remember the documentary, but he had like basketball players that he studied. Kobe Bryant is a little better of an example. Um, there's literally, uh, there's literally, I'm trying to remember, where I saw this, but basically Kobe Bryant was such a Michael Jordan. Like he, he studied him, right? He didn't just watch him. He studied him. He intentionally looked at what he was doing to try to understand why he was doing it and what maybe Kobe Bryant could apply from what he learned. That's what film study is, right? Well, Michael Jordan or uh, Kobe Bryant is, is known for calling Michael Jordan up at like two in the morning just to talk to him about a move he was thinking about using in his basketball game. That is an example of learning the meta <laughs> and then applying what you learned from the meta in your own game. 
okay? So anyways, that's why learning the meta will always be important. That's why to get better at Madden, you should always be studying the MCS film, in my opinion, because that film study really can, can come back to you and say, okay, this is what is the most optimized for winning. Now, what can we, what can we steal? What can we take away? And if you didn't know this little newsflash there, when I started doing YouTube and I started doing Madden in general, there was a lot of this, like, uh, our artistry around this, uh, I, would, I would say for lack of a better word, artistry. And basically what it came down to is everybody wanted to be unique. If you weren't unique, you weren't um, seen as successful. Uh, and, and, and really anymore, <laughs> now what's really interesting is that that pendulum has honestly kind of flipped. And now it's more so... Well, if you are unique, you're probably not very good. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's, it's literally that like, it, it, it's almost like said flip to the other extreme. And I think to a degree, there's some truth to that. Uh, because if you're just doing like stuff that just doesn't really like work just for the sake of being unique, um, I think that's a problem. <laughs> and I think it, I, I just think you're going to lose. Uh, at the end of the day, you play somebody that knows what they're doing you will have, there's a ceiling on off meta there off meta offenses always have a ceiling. The thing about meta offenses is you become the ceiling. And I think that is something that is so important to understand. If you want to get better at this game, if you run an off meta offense, you become the ceiling or, um, or your offense becomes the ceiling. If you run an off meta or uh, if you run a meta uh, scheme, you yourself become the the ceiling or the bottleneck to the scheme. Okay. It's not that you don't have the routes. It's not that you don't have the adjustments. It's that either a, you don't make them fast enough, either B, you don't um, make them at the right time. Right. Those are all little factors. So anyways, that is kind of what I'm thinking in just in terms of how to, how to explain this to you guys, because there's just a lot of, I've never seen a, um, a sport, Really, specifically a sport like uh, obviously man is an e-sport, but it is still like it's there's this competitive nature to it, right? I've never seen uh, like a competitive e-sport or sport or discipline or game or whatever you want to call it, where the best players in the world, most people don't really like them. They just really like most people would prefer if you know single back trio won a belt over bunch offset winning a belt. And, and, and really, it's for the and what's interesting is it's for the sake of variety. But there's a reason that NBA centers have now basically, um, if you think about it, like back in the 80s and 90s, even the early 2000s, an NBA center, basically what you were looking for an NBA center, you were looking for a you know guy that could rebound, could block shots, and score in the paint. That was the main couple things you were looking for. Now... You are you almost are putting yourself at a competitive disadvantage if your center cannot hit a three. If your center cannot hit a, th hit a three, why? Well, because offenses fundamentally are trying to create space, and if a center is standing near the basket, it constrains the space that the offensive player has to be able to attack the basket. Okay, this is this is this is like fundamentally true. Okay, and you literally see this. Every center now can shoot threes. Every center can shoot threes. It's an evolution of the game uh, more so than it's like, and, and, and it truly became the meta in the NBA to have a center that could shoot threes, okay? You can apply that same logic to, to Madden. You seriously can. The same, it's almost a one-to-one -one application. You used to run a sale concept like this on the left side. This used to be sale, okay? Or like this on the left side, right? That's what you used to do. Now, you do this, <laughs> as you can see, okay? Uh, be why? Well, because it's more efficient and it's more effective at the best level of the game. So, I just think that is so, like, I just think that's so important. Like, um, myself, I, I struggled to kind of like identify why, um, and, and really even like how to learn the meta for a long time, because I just didn't, like I said, I came up in an era of Madden where everybody needed to be unique. 
everybody like like you if you were if you were good at Madden but you weren't unique, you were considered um, like a copycat. But what's the NFL called? The NFL is called a copycat league. Why? Because the NFL understands what film study ultimately will lead to, which is doing the most effective things. Now, you might do the most effective tactics in the least effective way. That is a possibility. For example, I'm going to use an NFL example now. Um, for example, the, the Philadelphia Eagles, right? So the Philadelphia Eagles changed the NFL with the quarterback sneak. Okay, they just did. Um, they they found a very effective way to almost guarantee themselves that they were going to get a yard um, on any fourth and inches or any short yardage, uh, short yardage situation. So what happened? Pretty much everyone in the NFL now runs a version or some type of quarterback sneak, right? Um, and you've seen this happen all throughout. Now, not every team in the NFL can run the quarterback sneak as effective as the Philadelphia Eagles, but it doesn't mean you don't run the quarterback sneak, right? So it's kind of that idea. It's like not every, like, for example, um, double post is a great example this year because it's a pretty meta play. Or, or, I mean, even what you're seeing with me in this play, Durham. Durham is literally, like, every comp Madden player will tell you Durham is a top five play in this game. This play right here, it just does a lot. It it it, it just attacks a lot of a lot of space on the field, and there's honestly almost always somebody open if you can make the read. If you can make the read, I run, <laughs> and, and and you you can see this from really any film room I've done in the last week or so, or just any game I've played in the last week. I run one of the most effective plays in Madden in the least effective way. Right. So it's both both of those little things matter um, in terms of your ability to increase your probability that you're going to win the game. You have to understand what is good, why it is good, how you might be able to either tweak it or make it better or add it to your own game. And then the most important part and the part that I have been trying to spend a significant amount of time this off season here to learn is now you got to go actually do it. Now you got to go actually execute it. You actually have to make the right read at the right time. You have skill is uh, this guy that wrote this book, the talent code. It's one of my favorite books I've ever read. I'm not done with it yet. When I get done with this, I want to do some stuff with this on the channel this summer because I think it really helps explain um, how you actually get good at something. Uh, and basically the talent code, I'm going to give you just a brief synopsis of the book, but I want to give you this definition. So he basically sought to understand uh, kind of like how skill is developed and what he defined skill as, I thought it was a pretty good definition. Skill is doing the exactly, exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. So doing the exactly the right thing at exactly the right time is a very big time, like, that, that's pretty much what skill, he kind of sums it up as like, that's what skill is. Um, not obviously one-to-one, -one, but in general, like that's the idea, okay? Doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time, okay? Well, I can do the exact wrong thing at exactly the wrong time a lot. So it's the discipline of how do I learn how to do exactly, and I had the guy wide open, um, how do I learn how to do exactly the right thing at exactly the right time? And I would even say, and, and in that timing perspective is another key thing. You watch these MCS players, where do they make, where are most games won and lost at the MCS level, at the highest level of Madden? And you can actually look at this in the real NFL. Where is the game won and lost? Well, let's take the NFL example. Detroit Lions play San Francisco 49ers. They go for it on fourth and two. Uh, they go for it on fourth and two. They're winning by 14 points. If they kick a field goal, they go up three possessions. If they don't get, if they don't get this fourth down conversion, they probably uh, will put themselves at a little. They will uh, significantly change the momentum of the game. There will be a momentum swing. And so, what do they do? They decide. Well, let's go for it. Let's go for it on fourth down. And honestly, yeah, you might go for it on fourth down uh, in that situation. But guess what? There's no, that's not the only clock management mistake that they made in this game. Let's talk about some other clock management mistakes or game management mistakes uh, that was made in the 49ers-Lions game. Let me give you another example. I'm pretty sure it was like third down and goal, and they had, to, they, they had three timeouts. They were down by two possessions, 
And so what they needed to do was they needed to score, uh, but they also needed to conserve as much time as they got in case they didn't get an onside kick. They had three timeouts, so even if they didn't get the onside kick, they could call their timeouts, put themselves in a position to be able to at least get the ball back and have a fighting chance at winning the game or at least tying the game. So what do they do? Well, third and goal, they call a run play, assuming that they're going to be able to get the run play or maybe assuming that the Niners weren't expecting it or whatever. It doesn't really matter. What matters is the result of that. The result of that decision, they get stopped. They have to burn a timeout. So now they don't have three timeouts to be able to stop the clock. They don't get the onside kick, and they lose the game. What's even more ironic about that decision is that they ended up going for it on fourth and goal and throwing a pass and completing it. And again, obviously, you know, there's probably much more to the story than we could unpack today. But in general, that's a game management mistake, right? If you watch at the highest level of Madden, most of the time, most of the time, and you're seeing this in the Madden Bowl right now, and this is something that I've just had to wrestle uh, a ton with the implications of because it definitely matters. So the implications of the of the of the reality and the re- <laughs> look at look at my man Harris um, of the reality. Okay, where's the game won and lost? Stuff like that. D line picks, uh, mismanaging clock situations. That's where most high level games are won and lost. So you have to do exactly the right thing, make the right read at exactly the right time, manage the game well. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. To get our full ebooks, join the Patreon. Links in the description below.